Welcome back. So we're working towards creating Food Vision Big. And in the last video, I challenged you to download the Food 101 data set. So I trust you gave it a go. There's a different section of the data set for training and test data. So that may have been the, the little trick you might have stumbled upon because I know I definitely have. So let's imp from Torch Vision import data sets. And we're gonna set up our data directory, even though we already have one, we're going to do it anyway. So from path lib, import path, and our data dir is going to be, of course, path data. And then we can get the training data. So get the training data. So this is going to be, if we read into the documentation, it's 750 images times 101 classes. So that is 75,000, 750 times 101, 75,000. 750 training images. And then the testing data set is 250 images per class times 101, which gives us 25,250. Add those together, we have 101,000 total images. So train data equals data sets dot food 101. The root is going to be data dir, and then split equals train and then transform. So this is where we want to pass in our training transform that we created before. Food 101 transforms. That's going to apply data augmentation to the training data, which is what we want. Oh, excuse me. I just want to go food 101 train transforms. So I'll write a little note here. Apply data augmentation to training data. Then what do we need next? Well, we can pass in the download tag or download bool parameter. Download equals true. So what's happened here? Food 101 transforms. Oh, I'm gonna call these train transforms so it's a little bit more clear that we know that they are for the training data. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're also going to get the testing data. Get the testing data. So this is 250 times, I might go 250 images. Images times 101 classes. And then we'll go test data equals datasets dot food 101. The root is going to be our data directory, which is of course just the data file. And then I'm gonna set the split. The split I wanna download for the test data is of course the test data. And then the transforms here or the transform, sorry, is going to just be the plain old Fnet B2 transform, uh, transform, sorry, rather than the train transforms, which include data augmentation. So I'll write down here, don't perform data augmentation on the test data. We don't do data augmentation on the test data uh, generally because the test data emulates data we've never seen before. So we're trying to emulate with the test data, data from the real world. So download equals true. So who's ready to download the biggest data set we've downloaded so far? Let's do it, hey? In three, two, one. Now, because this is going to download so many images, 101,000 to be precise, it might take a little while. So yeah, see, we're getting a time limit of about five minutes to download to Google Colab. Now, of course, this will depend on uh, a number of things such as where you're your data has been hosted or where your Colab notebook has been hosted on the cloud. So I'm just going to let this run. And over here, we're going to get a file. Yeah, there we go, food101.tar.gz. So this is gonna be like a, a compressed file. And then this functionality here we've, we've written from torchvision.datasets is going to not only download it, but also unzip it. So we'll see what that looks like in a second, but you could do this process of what we're doing for Food Vision Big for almost any data set in Torch Vision data sets. And what I mean by that is if you wanted to try starting working on your own problems, we focused on Food Vision, but there are a lot of data sets in here that you could work with to practice your computer vision skills. So there's Flowers 102 if you like flowers, that's a similar data set to Food 101 except uh, classification with flowers rather than food and a whole bunch more. So check out those data sets. 
That's one of the best ways to practice your skills is to download a data set and then start running a series of modeling experiments, just like we've done throughout the whole course. And finally, rather than wait here for this to download, I'm gonna let it download in the background and I'll come back once it's finished and if anything errors, I'll let you know. And we're done. The magic of cinematography. So as you saw here, or as you can see here, it took me about five or just under six minutes to download it, but to unzip it and whatnot, Colab's telling me this cell took about just over seven minutes, but that's not too bad to get a data set of 100,000 images for free. So now we've got Food 101, and then we have all of the images in here. Look at all those classes. Apple pie, baby back ribs, baklava, beef, kappa, cappuccino, cappuccino, maybe I'm saying that wrong. Beef tartare, beet salad, beige net. What's a beige net? Well, let's get our class names variable, hey? Get Food 101 class names, and forgive me if beige net is one of your favorite food, or if I'm not even saying it correctly, but let's go train data.classes. This is going to give us a list of class names. So we'll view the first 10, Food 101, class names. Perhaps your favorite food is in this list. There we go, apple pie, baby back ribs, all those ones we went through before. Churros, clam chowder, cupcakes, oh I love cupcakes, donuts, eggs benedict, filet mignon, fish and chips, frozen yogurt, fried rice. Okay, this is gonna be much more exciting when we deploy it as Food Vision Big. There's a fair few different classes here. Guacamole, gyoza, hamburger, okay, that's enough. I wanna look up what beige nets are. What's a beige net? Oh, they look delicious. Fried dough food. Beige net is a type of fritter or deep fried pastry usually made from yeast dough in France. Oh my gosh, delicious. Okay, I'm a fan of beige nets. So, all right, let's stop doing that. We've got a data set. So now what do we have to do? Well, how about this is 101,000 samples, but to keep our experiments quick, again, we're not stopping experimenting just because we're in Milestone Project 3. Let's create a subset of this data set so that we're not trying to fit on 101,000 examples. We can train a model quite quickly, deploy it, see if it works. If it works, we can then, of course, come back and train it on all of the data. So that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll create a subset of the entire Food 101 data set. I'll see you there.